Hi everybody, welcome to another one of my DAISY console server modding videos, although what I talk about here applies just as much to PC as it does to PlayStation and Xbox. And in this video I wanted to talk about some basic tools and concepts and resources that will come in very very handy when you start uh, modding your servers. So the first thing I would say is that Modding on day Z, you have to have an awful lot of patience because the data out there um, and the tutorials out there aren't always that um, comprehensive in terms of what you might want to do. They might always not be that uh, easy to follow as well. Also, when you make changes to your server, especially when it comes to changing things like the, the loot on your server, these changes can take an awful long time to take effect. And in fact, when it comes to modding, the actual modding bit, so the, the changing of the, the code in the XML files or the JSON files, is actually that, that's easy. The difficult bit is the testing afterwards to make sure things work. And that's why you may well find on my channel, especially, you might think, well, Rob, why haven't you done a video about this? And often it's because I might have tried to do it, but I couldn't recreate the effects consistently enough where I can say, okay, here's a video, this is how you do it. So you need an awful lot of patience. So for, if, for example, you change some uh, some of the way that uh, items spawn in on your server, let's say you, you add some more guns, it could take a few days for those changes to take effect. So just, just remember that. Um, one of the tools you're gonna have is if things go wrong. Um, and that is at the bottom of your settings. And that is this setting down here, which I've just gone past, which is reset mission XML to default. So if you're ever in a situation with modding your server, where you, you mod everything, you do, you do some changes, um, and then the server stops working, maybe things just aren't spawning in. So what I'm talking about is you go into the server and say there's no zombies. Zombies are always a good indication that things are healthy in your server. If you go into a town and there's no zombies at all, something has gone wrong then. If you're in that sort of situation, you can tick this box, you can press save and you can restart the server, then you untick it. And what that does is that takes all of the XML files and it turns them back to the vanilla ones so that your server will start to work again and then you can work on your you work on your edits again. The other thing you can use in conjunction with that is um, Bohemia's uh, GitHub where they have the vanilla files that we're gonna be working on. So all the files that are on your server when you go to the file browser in here um, and we click on this and we go into all these files, your, all your config files, CFG environment XML. We're going to be working a lot with the types.xml and the events.xml. All of these things here, the original ones are in Bohemia Active's GitHub. And all you have to do is you click on the green code button and you download the zip and you can have the original files. Now, don't worry, there's gonna be links to all this stuff in the description below the video. So that's another good resource to have on your local PC. So that if you're not sure, say you've done an edit on a file and you want to take it back to the vanilla file, you know, you can, you can use that. Now to actually do the edits on the files, what we're gonna be doing really, what I recommend you do is you download the files from your server and you work on, work on them locally on your local PC. So you're gonna be using hopefully something like Notepad++. Now Notepad++, it's just a, a fancy text editor, but what's really cool about it is that when you load in documents, it recognizes what language they're in and it color codes stuff. So it's easy to see, well, sorry, it's easier to see mistakes as well so that's really important so use notepad plus plus and as I say the way that you want to be editing your files is not really directly on the server you want to be downloading them using that button there editing them locally and then you can upload them and then you can make a backup as well when you when you download them before you edit them and then you can upload them and restart your server another really important uh, resource which I haven't put down but I'm going to do here is the XML validator so when you make edits to your XML files, you can load them into the XML validator and that will validate to them. There are some files that have errors in them, mainly when it comes to remarks. So you know when you, you get the little uh, arrow bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, zombie spawns, dash, dash, um, uh, right angle bracket. There's a few of those that are actually wrong 
Okay. Now it doesn't affect the running of the game, but XML validators don't like them. And there is also the JSON formatter and validator as well. So I'll put the links to those in the description. Again, if you if if we're editing a JSON file, we can load it in here and we can check that that it's working already. So most of the concepts, most of the things we're going to be working on, we're going to be working on them in Notepad, um, copy and pasting, and then we're going to be uploading these things to our server. Now, as far as actually what we're actually doing um, there's there's some resources you can look at to give yourself some background there's Bohemia Interactive's official wiki um, about Daisy and what this have what this has in it is it has some quite good stuff about Daisy server and how to how to edit things there's, it's not very comprehensive but there is there is some interesting stuff in there um, their official wiki. Also, there's the actual Daisy wiki. Now, the Daisy wiki is more about how to play Daisy. You know, like the towns and the weapons and the gear that you can you can get. But there's also lots of stuff in it about how Daisy works. So, in terms of the central economy, how you know how and why things spawn in particular locations. You know, um, what are the names of different things? Um, and that, that can be very useful as well. So, you know, take a look at that. And some of your best resources are going to be on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so, you know, just do a search for Daisy. A guy who, who I would highly recommend is Don Sibley. Now, there's lots of great people doing videos out there for Daisy. I'm just picking on, on Don because he has a very good way of um, describing things. And he's done some really cool videos that go into quite a lot of detail about how to do things. And he goes through them step by step. So I'll make a link to this playlist in the description below this video as well. And you can look through. Now, just remember, whenever you are watching any of these videos on, on Facebook or, or YouTube, remember, Daisy has evolved over the years and changes and more things get added to the game. Some things get taken away. So some things may have, may have changed by the time you come to watch the videos. Um, another excellent resource is Balshad's Discord. So again, I'll put a link to this in the description below the video. So Balshad, top guy, his his Discord basically has um, amazing tutorials that tell you exactly how to do things, um, and he's pretty good at describing how to do things as well. And I use these. I use this as a reference. If I think, oh, how do I add something to a zombie's backpack again? And I'll come and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll I'll remember. Um, so that's a really superb uh, resource there as well. Now, as we go along and you get more involved in this, you may well get to a point where you actually think, I want to take this a step further. And if you really want to get involved in doing some complex Daisy server editing, and this is just for console as well, Really think about having a copy of Daisy on your local PC um, or laptop, even if it doesn't run very well. Because if you buy a copy of Daisy off Steam, um, what that enables you to do is you can then install what we call a local server on your laptop or your PC. So you, in effect, you instead of working on a server in Nitrado, up in the cloud somewhere, you can work on a server that's on your local laptop or local PC. And the beauty of that is you can make changes very quickly and even better you can test those changes very, very quickly indeed. Now, I understand that you know the reason why you're probably playing Daisy on console is because you don't have a PC or a laptop that's capable of playing Daisy. It may be, though, however, that you've got capable of, of a laptop or PC that's capable of playing Daisy badly. That's all you need because you can turn the graphical settings right down because when you're, when you're testing mods, and, and testing modifications and testing things to see if they work. You're not looking for prettiness in the game. You're not looking for the frame rate. All you're looking for is to be able to jump in and use admin tools because we can use some of the PC mods to help us and go around. And ultimately, what you can then do is you can install a, a free mod called Daisy Editor. And um, what Daisy Editor allows you to do is very, very easily place buildings and structures and loot inside Daisy and then export those files to then use those files on, on console servers. So very, very important indeed. Right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the, the, the core concepts behind uh, what we're going to be doing with uh, the, the modding. Again, make sure you download 
um, Notepad++ and make sure you go through the links in the description below this video and add these um, these links to uh, some bookmarks on your browser so you've got them for, for easy reference if, if things go wrong or you need a little bit of help. Um, so there we go. Anyway, so hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And more importantly, though, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section as well because I use those questions to drive content on this channel. Um, and don't worry, there's no, no such thing as a stupid question. Um, if I know the answer, I'll make a video about it. If I'm not sure, I'll do some research. And, you know, if you're thinking of that question, there's probably a thousand other people who are thinking of that question as well. So feel free to write the questions down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Brilliant. Thanks again and I'll see you again soon.